Hey y'all, Michelle Raza here with the Finding Yourself Book Club. And today we're gonna continue John Gottman's What Makes Love Last. Uh, hoping I don't get cut off by my recording here. I'm still having problems with my phone. Um, really frustrating. But anyway, if you haven't had a chance, please do check out our website. We're at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. You can fill out a contact form there and we'll be in touch with you. you. Also, if you'd like, you can download the Life Balance Questionnaire free of charge, fill it out, and then send it to us. Your first consult is always free. Okay, so we've been talking through working through your messes, big and small. And what we're getting ready to do is have the State of the Union uh, conversation between you and your partner. And so the um, Godman breaks it out into a tune, which is sweet, right? Because that's his big word, attunement, is how you connect with each other. So that's the speaker's job of the A is awareness, T is tolerance, the second T is transforming criticisms into wishes and positive needs. Then we move to the listener's job, which is what we've been covering in the past two videos. U is for understanding, N is for non-defensive listening, and E is for empathy. So today we're gonna to talk about empathy. In the original Star Trek series, Mr. Spock used telepathy to do a Vulcan mind meld with others so he could share their experiences. To succeed, he had to shut off his own consciousness for a while. This is close to what I mean by empathy, particularly when your partner is expressing hurt, anger, or sadness. Attunement requires a mind meld of such intensity that you almost become your partner, experiencing his or her feelings. We all have this ability, but to utilize it, we must let go of our own opinions and emotions for a while. Nothing brings this idea home as clearly as the recent research by Robert Levinson and his former student, Anna Rueff. In a series of studies, their subjects watched a video of their conflict discussion twice, both times while turning a video recall dial. During the first viewing, they rated their own payoffs moment by moment. The next time around, they guessed how their partner rated the video. Here's where it gets interesting. The researchers also measured each partner's psychological reactions as they guessed what the other was feeling. They discovered that the subjects who were most accurate in guessing their partner's rating dial reactions displayed psychological readings that nearly matched their partners during the exercise. They were reliving their partner's physiology as if it was their own. This discovery has pr profound implications for defining trust. To identify your partner's payoffs requires empathy so deep that it is physical. This sort of mind-body melding is crucial during conflict when it is also the most difficult. But the more you and your partner work on being non-defensive listeners, the easier it will become. Remember not to get caught up in the facts when your partner is speaking. Instead, concentrate on what he or she is feeling. When it's time for you to summarize what you heard, be emphatic rather than neutral in your delivery. Instead of saying, you want me to be on time because if I'm late, it makes you feel like you're not important to me. Begin with something like, it makes sense to me that you would need me to be on time. This approach lets your partner know that you consider his or her perspective and feelings legitimate and justified. Validating your partner's viewpoint does not require you to abandon or ignore your own. It just means that, given your partner's experience, you understand why she or he has these feelings and needs. Validation is such a fundamental component of attunement that summarizing it is like having sex without love. Most couples know intuitively that empathy is the mainstay of a loving relationship and not just important during the State of the Union meeting. When Lee's back goes out, he becomes grumpy and defiant about his doctor's command that he take things easy and not exercise. 
His childish attitude annoys and worries his wife, Susan, until she realizes that the injury triggered one of her husband's enduring vulnerabilities. He fears that he is more fragile than other people because his parents died young. To compensate, he tends to deny there is ever anything wrong with him. Instead of reminding Lee that it is important to do his exercises, Susan says things like, I understand why you wouldn't want to start exercising again. I know you just hate thinking that you might be weak, but honey, you're not weak. You are strong. You are a strong, healthy man whose back went out. Susan's ability to attune to her husband and validate his feelings isn't going to solve Lee's back pain, nor necessarily get him to be a good patient. But it's going to strengthen their attachment because Lee senses that Susan is there for him. Okay, so those that that's the underlying, those are the underlying principles. And in the next video, we'll go into what the first part of a State of the Union meeting sounds like. Um, now, I mentioned in previous videos, if you're interested in uh, Googling the Gottman Institute, he has a wealth of information. There are tons of blogs. There are Gottman trained therapists who are really good. So if you're looking for a couples counselor, I recommend finding one of those. Um, you can also sign up for the newsletter, The Marriage Minute. That comes, I think, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so it's not every day or anything like that. And at the bottom of it is a link to the podcast, Small Things Often, um, where they put out basically tidbits of the same information that you'll find here. Um, we can also learn it together like we have been. I'm very happy to be sharing this with you. Um, and if you want to talk about it, please send me an email, text, or call me, and we'll make time to chat. All right, take care. We'll talk more tomorrow.